This place will always stand as a reminder that cowardice and malevolence lay claim to their own victories. No good cause in this world, however right in principle or pure in heart, was ever advanced without sacrifice. And Dr. King knew this. Dr. King knew this. He knew that men with nightsticks, tear gas, and cattle prods were not the worst of what might be lying in wait each day and night. He was a man accustomed to the nearness of danger. And when death came, it found him standing upright in open air and unafraid. We see him today from a distance of four decades, more time than the man himself lived on this earth. And it would not be unusual if his stature or reputation had faded with the passing of the years. It happens sometimes that the judgments of history overrule contemporary opinion, indifferent to the fame and approval of the moment. But this has not been the case with the firstborn son of Alberta and Martin Luther King Sr. He only seems a bigger man from far away. The quality of his character is more apparent. His good name will be honored for as long as the creed of America is honored. His message will be heard and understood for as long as the message of the Gospels is heard and understood. Forty years and more, forty years and more after the great struggles of the civil rights movement, we marvel, we marvel that such fierce passions could be aroused in defense of such petty cruelties. Separate lunch counters, the preferred seat on a bus, one restroom for whites and another for everyone else. These were among the prerogatives fought for as if on a point of the highest principle. There is no end to human pride when it goes unchecked. No limited arrogance and presumption when they pass uncorrected. Like every citizen he spoke for, Martin Luther King had seen the underside of life in America, where the rules of respect and fairness and courtesy were thought not to apply. It was a humiliating existence, unjust in matters both large and small, merciless in its routine of insult, sparing not even the elderly or little children from its crude bullying. For black men and women, as Dr. King wrote, it was a life plagued with inner fears and outer resentments. And yet, as he knew, fear alone would never right the offense, and resentment alone would never overcome the wrong. Along the way of life, he said, Someone must have sense enough and morality enough to cut off the chain of hate and evil. The greatest way to do that is through love. Martin Luther King today is honored by the world in such a way that it is easy to forget. He once knew the scorn of the world. And it wasn't just force of personality that made him the man he was. It was the power of truth spoken with a servant's heart and a voice like no others. He put it this way, expressing the spirit of both the cause and its leader. I said to myself over and over again, keep Martin Luther King in the background and God in the foreground and everything will be all right. Remember, you are a channel of the gospel and not the source. When Dr. King and his comrades begin to break that chain with their campaign of peaceful protest, there were those who said, wait, just give it a little more time, be patient, be patient, and one day America will come around. But patience had been tried over many generations, and still millions lived in what he called the smothering airtight cage of injustice for his marches in Birmingham, Montgomery, and elsewhere, for his sit-ins and his sermons, he was called an agitator, a troublemaker, a malcontent, and a disturber of the peace. These are often the terms applied to men and women of conscience who will not endure cruelty nor abide justice. We hear them, 
We hear them to this day in Darfur, Zimbabwe, Burma, Tibet, Iran, and other lands directed at every brave soul who dares to disturb the peace of tyrants. My friends, sometimes the most radical thing is to be confronted with our own standards, to be asked simply that we live up to the principles we profess. Even in the most idealistic of nations, we don't always take kindly to being reminded of what more we can do or how much better we can be or who else can be induced in the promise and the promise of America included. We can be slow as well to give greatness its due. A mistake I myself made long ago, I myself made long ago when I voted against a federal holiday in member of Dr. King. I was wrong. I was wrong. We all make mistakes. We all make mistakes. I was wrong and eventually realized that in time, in time to give full support, full support for a state holiday in my home state of Arizona. I'd remind you that we can all be a little late sometimes in doing the right thing. And Dr. King understood this about his fellow Americans. But he knew as well in the long term, confidence in the reasonability and good heart of America is always well placed. And always, and always that was his method in word and action to remind us of who we are and what we believe. 